hello and welcome to this month's uh, Cloud Bytes webinar hosted by Dean Dorton. Presenting today, we've got quite a crowd. Uh, first, we have Dale Stratton, our Software Services Manager. Then we'll hear from Althea Sussman, a Senior Software Consultant. And rounding out third, we've got Kristen Linsmeyer, who is, is also a Senior Software Consultant. Today, we will be covering budget and planning tools. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the chat feature at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. We will be monitoring it throughout the presentation and we'll make sure to share any technical questions with our presenters at the end. We do not address your question during today's presentation. Contact information is included at the end of the materials, so please reach out after as needed. This webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to you by the end of the week. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do not hesitate to ask questions. And without further ado, I give you Dale Stratton. Well, good afternoon. Can you hear me, Julia? Yes, we can, Dale. Fantastic. Welcome you all to our September Cloud Bytes. Today's Cloud Bytes, we're gonna to try to cover budgeting and planning tools. Uh, in no way could we cover all of them. Our goal today is just to show you a little bit about those budgeting and planning tools and take a deep dive into a couple of those. Now, before we get too much into budgeting and planning tools, I wanna to talk just a little bit about a piece of our firm. We try to highlight just a little portion of our consulting services every time just to let you know what we can do at Dean Dorton. And mainly because our, our firm and consulting services have grown so much to be able to cover so many different capacities. I'd like to talk to you about our cybersecurity services. It's something that you wouldn't think a lot of accounting firms might have. In our consulting group, our IT services have grown, and honestly, this is a service that I wish was not necessary. What it means is it means that there are people out there that have bad intentions with your electronic data. So uh, we continually see news reports from T-Mobile or other large organizations where customer data is hacked and your information gets shared and you have a lot of large lawsuits and you have a lot of uh, public shame, if you will, and a lot of company damage that happens from cybersecurity threats. So we have built a cybersecurity team that is a set of dedicated professionals that that's really all they do. It's not just uh, our IT group that does server work and does PC work and they also dabble in cybersecurity. We actually have a dedicated team for that that covers Security assessment, you may not know what that is, but there's something out there called SOC 2 or different levels of assessments that say, an outside group has come in and actually looked at us and said, we keep our, our system secure. We can provide those reports and do those assessments. Uh, maybe you want us to be your entire virtual information security office. So we're gonna come in and be your entire cybersecurity team for you. We provide that service. Uh, maybe you just want some managed detection and response tools. So some tools that can monitor your systems and if there is a threat present to alert you to say, hey, you have this threat, here's what you need to do about it. And then there's incident response. So if you have the dreaded, oh, there's a ransomware, I can't get into any of my files and I've gotten this notice that says, send this Bitcoin too to get your information back. What can I do? And that's where you, you reach out and you say help, <laughs> and we can show up and work on threat containment, immediate response to that, and then forensic investigation to how this happened, what can we do to prevent it in the future, those types of things. And all of that really fits into that virtual information security office as far as outsourcing all of that security and whatever part and piece of that that you need. So just a piece of our firm thought I'd highlight in case that's something that you have any interest in, please reach out and we'll make sure and get you in touch with the right people. Now, the next piece that we want to cover, we like to highlight team members, just so that way you know who we are. In today's highlight is Kristen Linsmeyer, and fortunate for you all, you get to hear her later on in the presentation. She's going to talk about Sage Intech budgeting and planning for you. Now, Kristen has been with Dean Dorton for a while. She is one of our senior software consultants. She works primarily on Intact software, and most of you that have worked with her, I'm sure have worked with her on Intact implementation or support. She is a CPA. She started out in tax and audit and saw the light and came to Dean Dorton in the consulting world. I'll put it that way. She lives in central Wisconsin. 
with her husband and two children, and she enjoys hiking and exercising in free time. And uh, I know that she likes to be outdoors and spend time enjoying that. And if I had to say just personally about Kristen, what I hear is that clients love to work with her, that she's a delight, that she's always helpful and always pleasant to deal with. And you never dread calling Kristen or when it's Kristen that's going to help you. You don't, oh, goodness gracious, it's Kristen. It's always a pleasant experience and she's always helpful. All right, let's move into today's agenda for budgeting and planning. What we want to talk about is, well, budgeting, well, I have a budget, right? I'm good. I'm, I'm using intact budgeting, and, and that's all I need. So let's talk about what's more than a budget. So I'll show you just very quickly what intact does and talk about that and why you might need a little bit more than that. Then we'll glance at five potential solutions, just do a quick overview of that. and. I'm going to give you just a very glimpse at three of those five solutions and talk about them and talk about kind of what they all have in common. And then we will do, uh, I'm sorry, I'll show you some where to find some information on different budgeting solutions. And then we'll do a little bit deeper dive into MARDIS, uh, budgeting, forecasting, and, and uh, financial reporting. And then we'll uh, talk about Sage Intact Budgeting and Planning, or what you call SIBP, an overview of that. And, Althea will cover the MARTIS overview, and Kristen will cover the SIBP overview. So let's start off. Well, Dale, I've got an intact budget. So right there on your general ledger, it says budgets. I go in there. I have several different budgets, so I can make up a budget for uh, the beginning of the year. Here's what I'm going to have. This is my budget. If it gets off, off track, then I make another uh, contingent budget, and then I can put those budgets on financial reports. I go in, I can have a budget by account, by my different dimensions. I can budget by department, location, project, item. I can create a budget across all these different dimensions and make different values. And then I go into each account or each level, and I've got a budget for each reporting period. And then I go put those all on a report, and I put multiple budget columns on a report. I have variances, and voila, everything is great. Why would I ever need any more than that? Let's think through this just a little bit. Maybe something happens that was so far beyond what you budgeted for, and I'm, I'm going to bet that for some of you, this intact budget would be a step up. <laughs> that some people have the functionality there and have just never taken the opportunity to use it. If that's you, then by all means, let us know. We'll help you use what you've got. But what if, let me guess that this has maybe happened to some of you, something unforeseen like, let's just say, a global pandemic happens. And what if you're in the healthcare industry and you can't open? Or what if you're a restaurant and you have a forced shutdown or forced limited seating capacity and your revenues are one third what you thought they would be? Or you have some capital expense or some expense item that is so far beyond anything you budgeted for that none of your budgets look right at all and the numbers are so far into the negative or so far beyond actual, the variance is so great that you don't even look at that budget report anymore. When that happens, then your budget time and all that effort spent creating that budget is now just thrown out the window. Let's just worry about that next year. We'll make a new budget next year and we'll go from there. What if you actually had a tool that could help you with multiple what if scenarios and you could look through a rolling forecast, or you could quickly update something that happened and then use that variance in a percentage across everything else. That's where you get into a little bit more power with some of the budgeting and, and forecasting tools that are available with Intact than you would just by using the Excel sheet to create the calculations to bring into the Intact budgets. So let's talk about budgeting and. What can some of these other uh, tools provide. So a lot of times you're going to see the word budget almost start to disappear. The word budget, a lot of people just have in their mind, will have an account, there's an amount that goes with a month, and there we go, that's my budget. You'll start to see terms like planning and forecasting. So instead of just guessing at what an expense line might be, you have some tools that help you, based on historical data or averages, create different calculations, 
You'll see cash flow planning. I hear requests for that often. Well, let's, let's do cash flow plans based on expected AR and expected AP. What about workforce? Maybe your workforce is a large expense item. How can you plan through workforce of different hiring times? So if you're an accounting firm, maybe your uh, hiring expenses are much higher in certain times of year than others, so tax season. And what about capital expenses? Revenue planning, like that example I just gave, you have a pandemic that cuts your revenue to one third, and now we need to be able to roll with that on the fly, make changes to that. Multiple scenario planning. So, well, this is our budget, but in this scenario, we tweak this number because this could happen. And we could either go A or B most likely, and let's look at the budget in these two different ways. So we have a scenario planning option. Something else that a lot of extra budgeting tools would provide would be multiple source analysis. You might have, may have heard things like data centers, where you pull from information sources more than just your ERP solution. So maybe more than just Intact is providing information. We have a lot of customers that also have ConnectWise information or may use uh, Salesforce. And you want to pull information from ConnectWise, from Salesforce, from Intact from all these different areas, and you want to combine those into reports. A lot of the budgeting, forecasting, reporting tools can do that. Collaboration. So when you're creating a budget, a lot of times it's just the accounting manager or the CFO or maybe the controller that sits down and hammers out this budget into Excel and imports it in, there you go, you're done. But what if you've got a lot of different departments they are gonna be providing information and they need some tools to help them? So budgeting tools can also help provide collaboration where multiple users can have input on the values. Reporting and analytics, you're going to have reports that go far beyond just standard P&L and balance sheet versus budget. You're going to have options for graph, graphical reports. A lot of times dashboards will get into the budgeting scenarios. Uh, and let's also look at financial consolidation. So a lot of times, a budgeting and forecasting tool can combine information from multiple sources, but also multiple companies and do, uh, say, percentages of ownership, work on things like that. So different financial consolidation reporting from multiple companies and multiple sources. Here are five potential solutions. These are in no means all encompassing. There are many more out there, but these are the ones that you see <clears throat> quite a bit of. And as I said, the uh, MARTA solution and the Sage Intact budgeting and planning, we're going to have Althea and Kristen do a little bit deeper dive. Now, this is a very rudimentary graph that I made up for you. So price is increasing on the left-hand side and functionality is increasing across the bottom. You're going to have a range of solutions and that range, let me use the classic car example here. You go from the Geo Metro to the Cadillac Escalade and a lot of times you'll see moving from the left to the right that as functionality increases, also price increases. That does not always mean that the Escalade is a better fit for you. Sometimes the Geo Metro or the lower end solution is better fit for you and not just because of, pun on words here, the budget of how much they cost, but sometimes the, let's just say, let me run with that for a bit, the Escalade doesn't fit in your garage. Maybe the Escalade has too many buttons to deal with and to figure out while you're driving. So with that said, you're going to have solutions like Sintage or Martis that may be more simple to use, may not have all of the functionality, but they may have enough. It may be simple enough and may fit your uh, budget, your investment levels that you want to spend on that may be quicker and easier to get going. You may look at, uh, let's say, Sage Intact and Vena would be about double what Sintage and Martis would be. And then you've got Planful, which would be about double what Vena or Sage Intact would be. So if you're looking at a Planful solution, that's your higher end, that you're going to spend a lot of time implementing that. And you're going to get the most robust features out of that, but you have to put in the investment to set those up and create those. Let's take a quick Dale. look at the... Oh, Dale, yes. are we going to be discussing cost at all for any of these items? No, I'm not sure if Kristen or if Althea will go into cost of their solutions. 
but essentially it would be different for everyone. All of those solutions would be based off of how many users you have, uh, the features of those that you choose to pick. So it would definitely be on a one-off situation of what cost would be. This was a very rough cost estimate, just that Vena and Sage Intact SIBP would be about double what Martis and Syntage would be, and then Planful would be about double what Vena and Intact would be, and Planful might be up into the six-figure range. Thank you. So. Uh, for the Syntage, now this used to be called Budget Maestro. They changed the word, and like I said, you may see that word budget, just with the stereotypes tied to it, change over to the words planning, forecasting, things like that. So now it's called Syntage Planning Maestro. This would be, like I said, one of your, I hate to use the word lower end because it may suffice very well for you. It may be a great solution, but one of the lesser expensive options out there. <clears throat> this is a notice a dashboard type screen that you've got here where it shows the details, a bit of data entry there at the top where you could enter information per account. And then you have an analytics page. Some very nice graphical choices there. You've got, uh, notice the top, the top of the screen, you see revenue, expenses, and net income per, looks like a department breakout there. Revenues by department in a pie graph, yearly comparisons, debt ratios, so a lot of nice analytical features. And you should see those things across almost every solution. You should see some easy way to input information, and hopefully they have templates or they have some sort of um, analytical tools to help you adjust those budget numbers on data entry. A quick glance at Planful. Here would be your Planful input. This uh, looks very Excel-like. It's not an Excel sheet. Notice it's through there. Uh, notice the graphics on the left-hand side, their dashboard there where you're doing your data entry. And a very nice analytics page. This is the budget owner dashboard. Again, nice set of graphs. Most of these tools should be able to provide something like this. Again, there's gonna be a range of what they provide. Vena, and Vena was the overall winner between the three of the Syntage, the Planful, and Vena, and I'll show you where I, where I get the winner at. Here's an analytics page. It's a really nice looking uh, summary information. Notice it is a Power BI. If you've ever heard of Power BI, it's a very robust reporting tool that can grab information from multiple uh, areas and provide the good templates and a very robust reporting tool that it looks like they're built on. And Vena is also a product that you'll hear a lot of people in the accounting software world begging you to get away from Excel, that people hold on to Excel and you have to pry it out of their cold, dead hands type of situation. Vena has almost embraced the Excel environment and said, well, instead of throwing that out the window, let's build on Excel. So this is, notice, very Excel looking at the bottom there, income statement, balance sheet tab that you're on. You, they, they take that and they build on that and provide tools that mix and match with Excel. Now, where did I get that information? And I said winner earlier, just a very quick glance. There are a couple of places to look. So if you look at the intact marketplace, which if you just go to marketplace.intact.com, there is a page for budgeting and planning. You click on that and you will see the intact marketplace choices for budgeting and planning. Just means that they have all been verified through intact. They've done, we've gone through all the channels to say, yes, this works with intact. Now, when I said winner earlier, I got that from G2. G2 is a reputable software evaluation website, and I picked the different providers, Syntaj, the Planful, and Vena. They give user reviews, star ratings, and notice that v uh, Vena was the winner in a lot of different categories based on their evaluation. They give good uh, screenshots down here at the bottom, and that is just g2.com. I would start there. And last but not least, 
Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say last but not least. Uh, ERP support at ddaftech.com. If you ever have any intact needs or, hey, I'm really looking to find some more information about this, can you point me somewhere or help me figure this out? Always connect to ERP support at ddaftech.com and we'll do our best to help you out. Now, let's turn this over to the demos with Althea for Mart uh, Martis's budgeting, forecasting, and reporting, and then Kristen's SIBP. Thanks, and you all have a great day. Thank you, Dale. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Getting, sharing my screen here. There we go. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Althea Sussman, and I'm a senior software consultant with Dean Dorton. I've been implementing Sage Intact for about 10 years now, and I'm excited to present an overview demo of Martis and show you why it's a practical and cost-effective solution for financial planning, analysis, budgeting, and forecasting uh, for your organization, regardless of its size, type, or complexities. Martis's simple integration with Intact makes it very powerful. It's cloud-based software, has two-way communication directly with your Sage Intact data, so you'll always be in sync. You can create as many scenarios as you need to compare any what ifs, and you'll always have visibility into your budget overview, even while budget managers are still working on their own department's budget. In addition, non-finance leaders within organizations adapt easily to using MARTIS. In our demo today, we're gonna to explore dashboards and reports and how the budget worksheets integrate seamlessly with the summary budget. We'll also see the ability to add in payroll forecasting, special event budgets, and discuss approvals. Let me share my screen and we'll get started. Bring this down here. Um, I have chosen a dashboard as my homepage when I log into Bardis. You can also choose from multiple pre-built report templates to display the budget information you need to see. On my dashboard, I've chosen some common widgets to see a high-level overview of my budget so I can spot any obvious discrepancies. I can also filter my dashboard for any dimension, which will save time over gathering data or running separate reports. The menus are set up by sections, and we're going to explore some of the more common features under those sections that will help streamline your budget process. Right now, we're in the dashboard section <clears throat> uh, where we create financials and access the updater. The updater is how MARTA synchronizes daily to your Sage Intact GL account and dimensional data. But don't worry if you make any changes in Intact, like adding accounts, dimensions, or posting your journal entries, you can manually sync at any time. This is much easier than manually updating spreadsheets and reworking all affected reports. The planner section is where most of your budget work is done. The summary area is where you get a real-time, top-level view of your entire budget. This helps you analyze budgets as they are being built. There's no need to wait for managers to email or upload their individual budget spreadsheets. The individual budget worksheets in MARTIS roll up into the summary budget as they are being saved. There are multiple reports to choose from in the summary view, and also other ways to view data in rows and columns. You can see departments in your rows or projects in your columns or any combination of dimensions. We can filter by any dimension uh, to view different pieces of the summary budget as you need. You can drill in on any line to see the underlying data. Uh, you'll see here is an indicator that shows there's a note on this amount. Uh, and we'll see how that was entered in the next area. Uh, you can also drill down to the individual budget worksheets, which we're going to look at next. So below the summary area are the worksheets. These are the heart of the summary budget. Martis calls this bottom-up budgeting. This customer separates their budget based on department, 
and assigns users and approvers to each department's worksheet. If we look at Department 200's budget worksheet, you can see on top is the actuals report for this department for their reference. Again, with multiple reporting options and also uh, being able to filter by dimension. But as we scroll down to the bottom, this is where their current budget worksheet is. MARTIS worksheets are very similar to Excel, but the great thing about them is you're far less apt to have any issues like when a user makes changes in a spreadsheet. This is not going to overwrite a spreadsheet so there are less headaches and it takes less time. And these are familiar to work with like Excel, so users are not starting from scratch with learning MARTIS worksheets. You can manually edit budget amounts or use the budget tool to incorporate prior year budget or actual amounts. If we see over April, this is the note that we saw that we hovered over in the summary. And if I open the budget tool, you'll see this is where that note came from. In here, we can make adjustments, like adding a new part-timer in April that's paid bi-weekly, uh, and it will recalculate the numbers for us. Um, or we can do a percent adjustment or an allocation, of, you know, a number that gets spread out across the year. Uh, and many other adjustment types. Uh, and again, these are where we would add our notes uh, that would be seen up through the summary budget. Over to the right, we can apply changes in bulk by selecting all or selecting a few lines uh, and then clicking adjust. At the very bottom of each budget worksheet is where you can freeze, save, submit for approval, import, export with Excel, um, and see the approval status. In general, MARTIS budget worksheets shorten your time in making budgets, they're not complicated, and there's less chance of human error than with spreadsheets. Special purpose worksheets can be set up for events, projects, or any one-off need. They're a combination of assumptions and calculations that you can blend together with other budgets in order to include or break out just for the event or project. Let's look at one. On top, we have our assumptions of what a sponsorship will cost. So here's the bond sponsorship cost 5,000. Then the quantities is how many we assume we're going to have sign up for the bond sponsorship. And below that is where it's calculated. So five times 5,000 would be 25,000 in revenue that we're assuming. Uh, below this, we have other budget items. So we have additional expenses that we assume we're going to have. And then this at the bottom is a summary or a little mini budget summarizing all the calculations above. I can update this worksheet for additional plan sponsorships uh, or change any rate and it will recalculate all the way up to the summary budget that it's included in. So as you make any changes in worksheets, they roll up into any related budget. Uh, if I drill in on this calculation line, I just wanted to show that we have all the standard operators available to create most any formula that you need. Um, and also, if you decide not to have this event, you can simply disassociate it from the worksheet in your budget. The forecasting area is where you can create mid-year forecasts, which blend actuals and budget. So if things change at any point, you know, like a pandemic <laughs> in your budget year, you can rework your budget quite easily. Uh, and also, what if scenarios? If we edit this here, you'll see we have these two scenarios based on if we get this big new contract. And they're a little different. Um, and we can toggle between the, the scenarios in our budget summaries. Uh, and if I wanted to change something, I would simply select it and then change by percentage or flat amount. And again, put a note on it for full transparency. Planner setup is where you create new budgets, set the budget year, and manage historical budgets. 
Um, you could create a new budget based on actuals, other budgets, or a mix of both. Personnel budgeting is an additional section where you can put uh, import or enter payroll scenarios, such as projected hirings, raises, bonuses. Um, let me edit this one. This payroll scenario lists all positions that we have and their related GL payroll accounts. If I want to adjust any of these numbers, they're kind of a long list, I wanted to get to the bottom. I want to adjust this salary amount. I would mark the line and update my pay item. Now why I wanted to show you this is I can adjust this for the, this position based on month or each employee's individual anniversary in this position um, for either a percent increase or a bonus possibly uh, that would budget it for their anniversary date. Also in the positions tab, you can see uh, we can keep placeholders to budget for any empty positions. And in the pay types area, this includes benefit rates. So for example, workers' comp amounts will adjust automatically as you edit payroll scenarios because it's based on those payroll amounts. And on the flip side, if your state unemployment goes up, I could just go in here and adjust the rate and it will recalculate up through all of your scenarios and budgets. You also have the option of allocating employees or positions across grants, programs, um, departments, any of your dimensions. The final area is setups. This is where an administrative user would go to um, secure things such as accounts. You can see here these cash accounts are locked down. Uh, if we scroll down, you can see a lot of these salary accounts have restrictions uh, and drill down lim limited, limitability. Uh, this makes it so budget managers only see what they need to budget for, yet global areas for things such as the benefits affecting all departments can be locked down at the top level, but are used in their department budget calculations. And finally, this is where you create your users and roles that you assign in the worksheet approval process. Uh, in closing, MARTIS can not only help with collaboration and transparency during the budget process, but also modernize the way that staff can view these budgets and costs on a daily basis. Plus, it's easy to use and will be familiar to anyone that uses Excel. Uh, thank you, everyone, and I will hand it back over to Julia. Thank you, Althea. Next mm -hmm. up, we have Kristen Linsmeyer. Perfect, I think that's, that's good. Okay, um, welcome, my name is Kristen Linsmeyer. Um, as you've heard, I'm a senior software consultant at Dean Dorton. Uh, today, my section of the Cloud Bytes um, is going to be walking you through a quick presentation of um, Sage Intact Budgeting and Planning, also known as SIBP. Probably will refer to it as that throughout the presentation here, a little easier. Um, and then we'll jump into actually a, a demonstration of that. So. Let's just jump right into this PowerPoint here. Um, as an overview, SIBP offers a complete cloud-based financial planning solution for businesses. It's easy to use and truly it can uh, replace Excel for planning purposes. Uh, it's nice that um, it can be deployed in just days, so you really can be up and running quickly with SIBP. It has an easy to use interface for you know, really any finance professional. So you're able to own the system yourself and kind of learn and it's easy to use. And lastly, um, the design of SIBP is where you can flow seamlessly with 
your current Sage Intact uh, system, and so that the, the data and the dimensions that you use today in Intact is definitely supported in the budgeting and planning solution. SIVP uses a wizard-based functionality that easily syncs your data and dimensions to and from Intact. So with just a few clicks, you can transfer your actual from Intact into SIVP. You can build out your budget. Uh, you are able to use just different um, models and assumptions, and we'll talk more about that when we get into the demonstration. But essentially what that means is you're supporting schedules or calculations that help you formulate or calculate that budget line that you're actually gonna see within the budget itself. Um, and then obviously it, it pushes back or sinks back into Intact so then you can um, report on that appropriately. And here's a quick screenshot that shows how you can easily build out those models um, in the background here, or those supporting schedules that I just mentioned that helps you formulate that budget data. And also it's very easy to share the budget or certain pieces of the budget um, to certain users by giving them the appropriate permission. So um, if there's sections that they should or should not be able to see, you can definitely kind of limit that at the user level and make sure that people are only viewing the information that they should view. Okay, so let's jump on in here and I'm gonna pull up. Um, actually, we're gonna start off inside of Intact, okay? So everyone should be familiar with this. Um, I have a dashboard that has been created. It's called this controller dashboard. And the scenario that we're gonna talk about today is just, um, you know, somebody, whoever that is, management, maybe it's the controller, coming in here and kind of taking a look at sales and seeing what the year looks like, you know, compared to budget. So right now we have this uh, filtered for, we can, we can pretend that this is the future. It is the past, but uh, the first quarter of 2020, okay. So March of 2020, my year to date sales look good. I can tell by my performance card here and my gross profit, you know, looks pretty good as well. As we talk through today, we're going to kind of focus on this standard product line right here where as you can see, actual to budget, you know, I have that favorable variance here. So things are looking good so far through the first quarter. Now, if I go ahead and switch that up, I'm, in, I'm going to uh, look at, you know, second quarter or year to date sales here, looking at June 30th. And we can see now things have kind of taken a turn for the worst, right? So our sales are down, gross profit is down. I can tell down here by my red conditional formatting that um, my variances are, you know, looking at my actual to budget are no longer favorable like we saw previously. Um, things are not looking very good, okay? So I actually have another uh, dashboard that has been created inside of Intact, and this is more of an analysis and planning type dashboard. So as you can see, I have it filtered for that June 30th date and I'm looking at a rolling forecast. Again, we're gonna focus on this standard product line. Um, so it shows me, you know, my quarter information and then here, my month ending. So I've got some actual, you know, for the first quarter, things were looking good. And then once we get into April, May, June, you can see how things really, really kind of took a dive. So as I look into this, maybe, you know, I want to figure out how this particular budget uh, line got created or formulated, and, and maybe we should adjust that for the future quarters or months uh, so that we have realistic expectations, you know, moving forward, because uh, clearly this is not going to, you know, be the same as it was in this past quarter. So what I can actually do is right from intact, I can drill into this budget number. We're looking at this um, $153,000 number, and when I drill into that, it's actually going to take me over to Sage Intact budgeting and planning, okay? So again, it is a separate um, separate software you have to set up, you know, you can have different users that have access to this. The nice thing is that when you drill in from Intact, you're in a view only mode. So information so far is gonna be locked from editing to protect the in integrity of the budget here. So. Um, it, it's nice though, because it gives employees the ability to kind of do an, uh, a more in-depth analysis and figure out for that standard product line that we were looking at, you know, how did they come up with that $153,000 number? 
And I can tell from here, and, and we'll talk a little bit, you know, more detail, but I can tell that that was created from a particular model line. And again, those models are going to be your supporting schedule, how that calculation, you know, uh, takes place. So we'll look at that in just a second. My point being is that we can give people access to just view this information, or if I am a user that should have permissions or do have permissions um, to, to go ahead and edit a budget, I can actually just get off of this particular version I'm looking at, okay? And so I just kind of X out of that and I'll go ahead and now take a peek at the standard product line uh, that we were looking at. And I'm in the same area, it's just that I'm no longer in view only. So as someone who has access, I can come in here and make edits as I need to, okay? And just quickly before, we're gonna jump into this model line so I can show you guys how you could potentially produce, you know, your different budget lines that actually push back to intact. But over here on the left hand side is where this is what we call our budget tree. So I can I can create a budget. You'll notice that if I kind of um, bring these up this way, we've got three separate um, subsidiaries or three entities that we have set up in intact. And so for each of them, I can budget, you know, appropriate budget lines, however I see fit. Maybe that's by department or um, you know something along those lines, you have a lot of flexibility when you're creating that budget tree, okay? So now when I'm looking at this standard product line that, that we've been kind of looking at, I'm gonna go ahead and drill into this model line. And again, I can tell that this was created from the model line because of the information here. So when I drill on into that, you'll notice that it takes me to a different area of the system. I'm now in this inputs model, um, section, and this is where you can actually um, create basically different supporting schedules or calculations in addition to adding things like fixed assumptions um, and different type of calculations, okay? So if I actually jump up to the standard products here, you'll notice that this is where we kind of start from. We created a model line for our standard products. And so I've got a couple of items listed and a value with those items. And then down here, I can go ahead and say, okay, so for my, let's say my item 101 sales, if I edit that, I can see exactly how that gets calculated. It's taking my list price times my unit to get me, you know, my sales for that particular item. Now, within this formula editor, you can see that it is, you know, Excel-like and the fact that we can select these different model lines that we've created, use the calculations here. You can do if statements, min, math, sum, you know, rounding, all that, that type of thing in order to, you know, create that calculation. So what we did was create, you know, for those particular sales. And then we also did that for our premium products and sort of totaled those together. Okay, so down here, our total sales is taking our standard product sales and our premium product sales to get us our total sales. And that is what actually pushes back to that budget line. So with SIBP, you're able to sort of map things out accordingly. So even down to the, the general ledger uh, account level, the, you know, your, your specific GL account, you can kind of map things, these things together to push back to a, a budget line that, that gets created within SIBP, okay? Um, so the next thing that I kind of wanted to highlight with SIBP is the ability to create different scenarios, okay? So when we're looking at this um, total sales line and we look at July, you're still seeing for our standard products, you're seeing that $153,000 number here for that budget. Well, maybe I need to make some adjustments and I wanna look at this, you know, what if uh, our worst case scenario happens? And when I click on that worst case scenario, I can see that I'm looking at a different version of my budget. And if I scroll over to my July numbers that we were just looking at, here is my working budget, but I've gone in and I have input an 85% uh, decrease in sales, okay? So this is just one example where maybe you wanna get in and create a different scenario so you can kind of examine how the year could continue giving, you know, in this case, the worst, the worst case assumption in sales. And that's gonna allow you to better, you know, prepare for what could be your future financials. 
it's really easy to create those scenarios. In fact, I could come up here and I could just duplicate this and make adjustments as I needed to. Um, in case, that's exactly what I did. I actually created a, a best case scenario where I said, okay, instead of an 85% decrease in sales, I'm going to say that our best case scenario, you know, given the environment today is a 50% decrease in sales. Um, and so then it basically, you know, adjusts your calculation and your budget. So rather than that working budget that we've been looking at of $153,000 for July for those standard products, um, we're down to 76,000, okay? And uh, that is actually our best case, you know, in, in this world right now. So again, very easy to kind of create those different scenarios. And in addition to just kind of looking at this one off, what you can do is if I navigate over to my sheets tab, this is really gonna be kind of where you can do some reporting in SIBP. I'm able to kind of look at that and layer these different scenarios on top of my working budget and sort of analyze what, what happens if this were the case. So if I'm looking at my best case, right now it says best case only, but maybe I wanna compare that to my working budget. And so now you can see um, coming over here, you know, I can drill into my, my different types of products if I needed to, but I can just look at this total too. So I can see that my best case scenario compared to my working budget, there is a $2.1 million difference there. Um, so that, you know, just gives me a good, good glimpse into what could happen. Maybe I want to look at my worst case versus the budget, and I can see that that, you know, increases to a $2.9 um, million difference there. So, Again, just allows you to do some different um, analysis with these different scenarios. You'll also notice that within these reports, you are able to do some um, filtering by departments and locations. So you are able to kind of use those dimensions to look at reporting within the system as well. Um, SIBP does have some dashboard capability and it's gonna be very similar to what we just talked about where um, I can look at a particular scenario and maybe I wanna compare that to my working budget. And as you can see, I've got some different graphs, cash balances, um, you know, there's a revenue graph down here. Again, you could do some different filtering and things like that. Okay. Um, so if I actually jump back to my, kind of like my, my main tab, so that's my inputs main here uh, and my standard products. So again, right now we're looking at this worst case scenario. I'm just gonna close that out. So we're back right now to our working budget. Notice this $153,000 here. I wanted to point out that you have this history option where um, every time you go and make changes or maybe you export something to Sage Impact or bring in actuals, whatever that is, it's going to create a snapshot here. And the nice thing about that is that if, you know, let's say I made a mistake, and then I went ahead and I exported that to Intact, and I realized after the fact that you know we really shouldn't have done that. I can actually hover over this here, and it tells me, do you want to switch back to this version? So if I go ahead and click on that, it takes me back to that version of our budget, the snapshot before that particular merge, and I can go ahead and revert back to that that point in time. Okay, so you don't have to be you know too afraid of of making changes and then losing everything, you're always able to sort of get back to those uh, particular versions of the budget if you need to. Um, so the whole idea is that, you know, we're coming in here and trying to figure out what our future financial should look like. And maybe that best case scenario is pretty realistic for us, okay? And maybe I wanna go ahead and change, um, change my working budget to, to this best case scenario. So in order to do that, it's, it's very easy. I can click on those and I can say, go ahead and merge this with the budget, okay? And as it does that, I'm gonna navigate down to my standard product line again. You'll notice up here, we're not showing any particular version because this has now become our working budget. So rather than the 153,000 that we've been seeing for July for our standard products, um, we now see that 76 thousand dollars and then the adjustments you know for the the remainder of the year forecast there okay so it's really easy to kind of um, adjust things analyze and then at this point you know as long as this gets okayed by management or however that process works 
I can really easily sync this back in to let's see SPC. Let me enter my credentials here. Okay, I can sync this budget back into Intact. Okay, so I'm going to say I want to export my budget to Intact. And you kind of just go through this wizard, very easy to follow along. You can add this to an existing budget or you could create a new one. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and add this to um, my base budget that I've got created already. I'm gonna do this on a monthly basis here, just for my profit and loss. Uh, and I choose my dimensions and it essentially tells me that it's gonna export that budget back to intact. So um, it's, it's really you know, easy to do this. And as that gets pushed back into Intact, I can go take a look at my, um, my dashboards that we were looking at before. And then I would see those updates here to those dashboards you know, showing the 75 or $76,000. And I'll just do it quickly to see if that took and not quite yet. Um, but anyways, the point being, it's very easy to kind of go back and forth from the systems and make edits along the way you know, to kind of make sure you're, you have those realistic expectations moving forward, okay? So that was a quick overview. You know, in addition, I do just wanna mention that SIVP um, does have, you know, functionality to do personnel um, budgeting where you can put in different assumptions for, you know, new hires or annual budget increases um, for salaries and that type of thing. So there is a lot of capability capability there as well. I uh, just didn't have time to get into that today. Uh, but wanted to also highlight it here and just recap the benefits that we've sort of spoke about, you know, eliminating the pain of Excel, where you have to build out cumbersome spreadsheets. As you saw, it was very easy to make adjustments inside of SIBP and then push that information back. Um, you're able to utilize the built-in budget templates that lead really to a more effective and efficient budgeting and planning process. The scenarios we talked about, you can have unlimited scenarios that help you sort of analyze and plan out your year. And of course, that native connection with Intact um, is really seamless as, as you guys can see. So again, a quick overview of a few of the um, budgeting and planning tools that are available to you all. Uh, we wanna thank you guys for attending the CloudWhite session this month, and hopefully you got some information um, some useful information pertaining to those different options. Uh, I'm gonna put, um, well, first of all, any questions, feel free to put those in the chat. And then I'm also gonna put the information for Dale, myself, and Althea up here. So if you guys have additional questions or want a more in-depth uh, review of any anything that we talked about today, feel free to reach out to any of us here. Thank you so much, Dale, Kristen, and Althea. Um, at this time, we don't have any questions, but I do wanna let everyone know we have a very exciting opportunity. Um, the SIBP tool that Kristen was just showcasing um, is on sale right now at 50% off until 9.30. Um, that would is a week from today, so next Thursday. So if anybody's interested in that or has questions about that, please let us know. Um, we'll hang around here for another minute or two, but if anybody has any questions, please share that now. If not, we hope you have a wonderful day. We thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you all next month.